watch it just to let everybody know that. So Kathy Fillion is here and myself, Steve Piacenza. So we have more people still loading up. All right. Okay, I think we should maybe begin. So hi everybody. Um, and welcome to our Michael's Zoom class. This is the second one we are doing. Um, last week we did Gloss Mod Podge and today we're gonna be doing Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge. I see a lot more people loading up, so I don't wanna get ahead of myself. I wanna make sure we have a full class here. Um, so they're still coming in. So if you guys don't mind waiting a couple more minutes, I see just a lot more people popping up. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so this is our second Zoom class. We did Gloss Mod Podge last week. Today we are gonna be working with Dishwasher Safe. I just wanna say happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody. And the month of May is Mod Podge month. So we wanna throw that out. Um, we are going to be making a mug and we're gonna be doing a plate. So Kathy's gonna be showing you that and I'm gonna be answering questions. So any questions that you guys have, feel free to ask. I'm gonna go as fast as I can answering the questions. Um, and I just wanna show you really quickly. Again, it's the dishwasher safe Mod Podge and we're gonna be using napkins to make all sorts of napkins. Napkins are super popular now. People are collecting them. They have so many different cool uh, varieties. We're gonna be doing them on plates. This was a clear plate just with a napkin. Kathy's gonna go much deeper into all this, but just to show you guys what people are loading up, we're gonna be doing this and we're also gonna be doing a mug. So what's interesting about the dishwasher safe mod podge is once you finish your project, you are going to be able to put this in the dishwasher and wash it on the top rack, or you could hand wash it also. So that's what's interesting about this formula itself. It's in the blue bottle. It's a very cool project. Uh, you can do this on top of glass, ceramic, metal, and it can be washed. So this is a super strong formula. It's called Dishwasher Safe. I'm gonna hand this over to Kathy. She is going to, uh, we're gonna be, both be talking more about this. So any questions you guys have, Please ask if you've never used it before. It's an amazing formula and you're gonna to wanna to try this. Kat? Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to share with you these projects. Um, I wanna give you a little quick look at some of the things that we're gonna make. I'm gonna show you, this is a basic beginner project. This is the coffee mug and we're gonna be using napkins to create this design. And like Steve said, we're using the Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge, so you'll be able to put this in the top rack or hand wash it. And I wanna show you a couple other things that um, we've done with it, like these bowls. Now you cannot eat off of Mod Podge. So this is always the number one question, can I eat off of it? You cannot eat off of it. So you'll want to use it on projects that you're not gonna put food directly on. So this is a good one if you wanna do like a display or again like a bowl like this where you're doing the work on the outside on the plates like this glass plate here all the work is done on the back side so you would be able to eat off of these plates and of course with your coffee mugs you're able to drink out of the coffee mug because you just do your decal on one side just like that so this is super easy to do we're going to start with the mug today and it's a very simple project. After the mug, I'm gonna show you how we do the plate. The plate is just as easy too, but I've got a couple of tips and tricks. We're gonna be spraying the napkins with water and doing some things so that you won't get wrinkles and so that you'll have the best project ever <laughs> when you're done. <laughs> That's <laughs> so right. Start with the mug. So to get started, we're going to start with a plain mug like this. And this mug is from Michael's, and it is an Art Minds mug. And you know, I was, we were just talking earlier, this is a $2 mug. And if you think about getting a pack of napkins, how many of these you could create for really about $2.50. So it's a really good value if you're creating gifts or things like that. And the first thing you wanna do is prep your napkin. 
So to prep the napkin, and what I mean by that is you're going to peel it apart because you're only going to be working with the top printed ply of a napkin, just that top printed ply. And most napkins come two or three plies. So you're just going to remove those plies. Make sure I get this where you can see it. Now I've gone ahead and I cheated. Look, I cheated. I started a corner so that you could see that because sometimes actually separating the plies is the hardest part of the project. So you just want to separate just like that. And you don't need to go too fast because you don't want to rip it, but they almost always separate very easy, just like so. And then these I set aside because we're going to be cleaning our project with alcohol. So I use these to clean my project. So we really have no waste going on. Right, and the two ply cap is usually, the way I, reason why we separate them is because the two ply can bulk up a little bit too much. Yes, so that is a really good point. Um, if you have just one more ply or even two more plies, that's gonna create wrinkles. You won't be actually Mod Podging down the front and back of the first ply. You would be doing the front of one ply and the back of the other. So that's really not gonna give you the proper um, adhesion that you want. So then we're just gonna rub our mug down. Now, there is some, uh, you know, if you're making a left-handed mug or a right-handed mug. <laughs> so all of the lefties will know what that means, which side you wanna put your design on. So just wipe that down, and this is just regular um, rubbing alcohol. You do not want to use, um, you don't wanna use any cleaners that have scents in them or any extra oils, because you're really trying to clean the surface of any fingerprints or oils or lotion that you might have had on your hands. Let's see, make sure you can see that good. So I'm gonna cut a heart shape. Our napkins had sort of a natural heart shape. Oh, and I do wanna point out that these napkins have a little bit of gold in them, and that works too. So if you have napkins that have a little metallic, that works as well. And then we're just gonna cut a natural, just simple heart shape really simple you can cut any shape you want you could cut you know for me kathy a letter c so if you wanted to make these monogrammed you could do any designs like that that you want let's make sure i cut that big enough there we go that's going to fit on there perfect so now we're going to use the dishwasher safe mod podge one thing i do want to say is this does have a long cure time so it has a 28 day cure time but once you get through that cure time you will be able to wash this in the dishwasher, hand wash it, whatever you need to do. And the way you prime your bottle is just give it a roll. You don't want to shake it aggressively because you're trying not to create any air bubbles. And then for this project in particular, I like to pour it into a little um, cup because some of the napkins have, um, depending upon the dye that was used to create the napkin, that dye can bleed. So you don't wanna be dipping into your bottle and then dipping back in, you could add a little bit of color. So just get a little, but these are like um, fruit cups that my kids use. So I just wash them out and use them for um, my Mod Podge or my paints, whatever. Okay, so we have a question. Does the cure time extend depending on how much you use? The answer is no. Um, just to be clear, if you wanted to do, like we usually put two coats on, the dry time between coats is about two hours, but the cure time is 28 days. So you have to, before it goes into the dishwasher top rack or hand wash, you have to wait 28 days. It can't be 15 days, 10 days. It has to really be about 28 days before um, it goes into the wash, yes. And I would also say that you cannot speed that up by putting your project in the oven. <laughs> which is or blow thing. dry it or anything like that. Exactly. <laughs> that a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and add the dishwasher safe Mod Podge all the way to the front of my mug. Just like that. And then I'll line up my heart shape. And again, you could do any shape you wanted to. And then you just start in the center and gently, I'm not putting very much pressure at all, just gently press that out. This is really fun if you wanted to do seasonal ones, get some holiday napkins, 
you know, you could make um, a whole set of mugs for someone as a gift, but fill them with, you know, hot cocoa type things. There we go. So now that first napkin is down. It's very, very simple. And you want to just go around and make sure those edges are sealed. And I'm not putting much pressure at all. Then at this point, I like to take just a baby wipe. You could use a damp paper towel if you wanted to. And I'm going to lift that up so you can see it. And I go around and I clean off while it's still wet any of the excess that has gone over. It dries perfectly clear, so you don't really need to do this, but I think it just gives it a little bit more of a finished look. A little wrinkle there. If you get a wrinkle, you just gently press that out with your finger. Go around just like so. And that just will remove any of that extra. And the reason why I do that is, is to just make it look finished, but it's easier to apply the dishwasher Mod Podge to your surface and place your napkin down, rather than if you're doing traditional decoupage, you might uh, attach your Mod Podge to your paper and then put your paper to your surface. The napkins are so delicate that it's much easier to put your Mod Podge on your surface first. Okay, so we have a question. Would we be able to use the same method on top of mugs that already have some design on it, or does it have to be a plain mug? Yes, you can do this on top of a mug that has another design. If you wanted to incorporate whatever um, napkin design you want to embellish what's already on a mug, you absolutely can do that. And I would say, too, you kind of want to experiment so uh, the white background is great for almost every napkin because if you really look at a napkin, almost always the plies in the back are white. And that's what is, um, allows that color to really pop through. And when we do the plate, I'll show you what it looks like. This is just stepping ahead, but this is that napkin before we've painted the background. So you can see how translucent it is because this is on a clear glass plate. But we're, I don't want to get too far ahead because the plate is coming up. Um, now the other thing is if you have a dark colored mug, you're going to get a slightly different look. So other colors will pop out more with that. Um, and then if you wanted to, like we're using napkins here, but you can take um, tissue paper, like gift wrap tissue paper, and you can tape it down to a piece of cardstock or heavier paper and you can actually run that through your printer and print off a family photo or a vacation photo or a school logo or something like that then That's you're going to need that to dry it's going to yeah, have to dry. sorry Kat. That's yeah okay. we're, we're getting that question a lot um kimberly's <laughs> asking if you can print uh pictures as well onto um and and use the dishwasher safe on top of your ceramics yes. on your plate or whatever. So that answer is yes. Absolutely. Um, and what you uh, want to do is make sure if you're printing your own images, um, let them dry fully if you're using an inkjet. If you're using a laser printer, it's no problem. You just need to be careful. Some of those laser printers get kind of hot. So you may have to do trial and error with the owner or the printer that you own. Um, if you're doing it on inkjet, let it dry thoroughly overnight, and then I spray it with um, hairspray, just to set the ink, and then you're good to go. So then to talk, I hope, does that answer that for everyone? Thumbs up, yeah? Does that make sense? Um, so now you need to seal it. Normally, we would wait two hours for this to dry, but we don't have two hours for this to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you seal it. And I just take the brush, and now I'm gonna go right over the edge, just gently over that edge. Okay, so does it matter which side of the tissue paper you use? Some have a shiny side, some have a dull side. No, it does not matter. You can use um, either side of that. Just make sure maybe to do a little test to see what it looks like on both sides because uh, it will change a little bit from the napkin going down with the dishwasher safe on top of it. It usually um, changes the colors just a little bit, I would say. It almost um, brightens them in a weird way sometimes, uh -huh. and then sometimes it brings them down. So definitely do a test before you try that out. Well, that's the thing, um, because everybody, you know, depending upon how the napkin is printed or where your tissue paper is manufactured, it's all a little different. So you do 
need to kind of do a tiny bit of a test. And I wanna show you guys, I hope you can see that. Do you see how my, the end of my brush is a little bit pink? Do I have that? I'm like, yeah, you can see, see that? that yeah. That's why you wanna make sure you put your Mod Podge in a little cup because yeah. you don't wanna dip that pink back into your jar. It's fine for this project because it just keeps, you know, it, it's just going right over the napkin. You can't even tell, it's very faint. So you'll just- Can you use what dishwasher safe Mod Podge on painted ceramics for a sealant? Yes. The answer is yes to that also. That will completely protect it. Um, again, you wanna put your first coat on, let that dry for two hours, add a second coat on top of that, and then you have to let it sit for 28 days to cure. So now our napkin's completely down. And at this point, I would let this dry thoroughly for two hours and I would repeat that process two more times. So I'm in the camp of three coats. I've done this um, a gazillion times and I have run these through the top rack of my dishwasher probably a hundred times with no problems at all. And guys, when, when you are doing this project uh, with the napkins, make sure that you're using a soft bristled flat brush. You want to make sure that your bristles are not too hard because you don't want to tear into that napkin. So make sure it's a flat brush across like Kathy is showing you and that they're soft bristled. You're going to get the best results with that. And a really light hand. I'm not putting any pressure at all. I'm just barely touching it. Yeah. And you don't really need to because the napkin, um, it sticks so quickly. I mean, it's just, it's just perfect. It just yeah, this also perfect. works on ceramics, glass, and metal. Just to let you guys know if you have other projects. Uh, metal, it works great on it, and um, glass also. And um, if, for anyone who's joining a little bit late, um, we are working with the Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge, and we just wrapped up the mug. But one thing that we wanted to let you know is that at michaels.com, under the classes, you can see all of the classes that are coming up and you can watch the videos of the classes that um, we finished. So like last week we did a collage. So if you wanted to see that, you would be able to just go to michaels.com and have a look at those types of, you know what, I'll show you the collage that we did. So last week we did this collage with the matte Mod Podge. We showcased the matte and the gloss. Yes. So th if you missed any of the beginning of this video, you can always reference back to the um, classes page at michaels.com. They have all the classes there. So now I wanna show you guys about the plates. Well, oh, you know what, before I do that, uh, see these bowls here? This was the same exact technique as the mug, but we just cut little pieces and glued them together to create the motif. So this was probably like two or three napkins to do that. And then um, here, the platter is the same thing. So that was all that heart-shaped napkin, but instead of cutting the heart shapes, we just did sort of an organic shape like that. And this is great if you want to put out like a fruit platter or something like that. You know, you could put candles on it. And again, these are really cute for spring, but this is one of our favorite projects to do for the holidays. They make great gifts and they make great displays. If you're doing a table centerpiece or something, you can do this on glass candle holders to create a gorgeous centerpiece and have mugs that match it and have your own paper napkins that match. So it has a lot of wow factor if you- Yes, Cindy, can. you can absolutely. If, if something happens, you make a mistake, let's say the napkin does tear, it's your first time, wash it off. This is non-toxic, this is water-based guys, and uh, you can wash it right off and just start over. And that's um, important to know, but wash it quickly. So we did a test, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago where we did a glass plate and I Mod Podge the back of it and I waited about an hour to wash it off just to see how it would go. And um, I had to soak it overnight. And so it, it does stick quick. So if you see a mistake, yeah. you know, wash it, with, wash it right away and, and start over. But it will, like if I took this mug right now and washed it, boom, it would just slide right off. No problem. Yes, there, brother. There's a, little bit of, there's a shortage of rubbing alcohol. You're correct. And you don't have to use rubbing alcohol. You can use soap and water to wash these sufficiently also uh, and start your project. So alcohol is just another way to do it. But if you don't have it, soap and water works fine. And just make sure you dry it completely before you yeah. start Yeah, and don't use, like, basically the, the, uh, the huge rule is do not use spray cleaners that have any, like, no. added scents and things like that because those um, have oils in them. So if you have, like, a lavender spray or something like that, that's gonna add oils to it and it won't stick as well. 
Um, but you don't need the uh, 90 plus alcohol. This is just the 50. Uh, so this is just cheap, cheap dollar store style. Yes, uh, thrift stores are a great place to find items to do this project. It's amazing what you can uh, use dishwasher safe on. There's a lot of old ceramics and platters and all that, that this project to make them up to date with these new napkins is great for thrift store finds. Just remember guys, if you're doing a platter or plate, it's not on top, it has to be underneath. You can do it on top if you're not gonna be serving food, but if you are serving food, you have to make sure the food doesn't touch it. And that goes the same with mugs or glasses or something like that. So this is the um, clear glass plate. It was clear, I should say. So this started out as a clear glass plate. And um, we are using, now all the uh, napkins came from Michael's. So any of the napkins that you're seeing were part of Michael's. So this is the napkin that we're gonna be putting onto this plate. Again, this is for a really cute floral kind of summery spring look, but if you're doing something for the holidays, you know, they always have amazing napkins out for the holidays and they come out early enough that you can make these for gifts. Hey, before you start, Kath, let's switch over really quick. Let me show them these that we oh, also yeah. made. These are so cute. So these are the new, to like- switch this over, you can see that this was the napkin that we used and here's the plate that we did. This is what the back looks like with the dishwasher safe, the one ply napkin. There's that one. And then we also did octopus hands here. This one here, um, again, it's just whatever napkins that you're, you love, you can do it on any clear plate. And here's the back once again, dishwasher safe, ready to put in the dishwasher. And you can eat off of these, you can put food on top um, and you can hand wash or dishwasher safe. So here's the two that we actually did last week. I know, those, I love those napkins. Michael's yeah. has the cutest napkins right oh, now. Oh, wait, 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 one more, one more. Hold on, here's the cheetah. There we go. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, good. Okay, back to you, Kat, sorry. No problem. End okay, so let's get started with the plate. Is everybody ready to see how to do the plate? <laughs> The mugs are fun, but I tell you, the plates are where everyone goes a little bit excited. Oh, and I also have a um, cute wine glass to show you. We've got lots of stuff. Uh, hey, before we get started, we are doing a giveaway. Yes. Um, so we're going to randomly pick two names. Um, and I guess we're picking that at the very end. And we have um, a place where you'll email, if you're the winner, where you can email to tell us your address and things for the Mod Podge win. Yeah, and Plaid gives away some great um, Mod Podge baskets. They load them up, so, so this it'll, be, is, it'll be a fun basket to receive. Uh, someone just said, do we have to comment? Well, that just, just let us know you're here. You can comment with a smiley face even. You don't have to say anything if you don't have a question. So this is the plate that we're going to do. It's a glass plate, and we've got one layer of napkin then the Mod Podge, and then we're gonna show you how you paint the back of it so that your napkin really pops through. Otherwise, you get a translucent look, which is also very cool if you're going for that look. But this is if you really want your napkin to show through. Okay, so I use a tall can good, just a plain old can good as a stand. And I like these because they're heavy, so it's a nice weight for me. And just like before, we're gonna go ahead and clean it off. So you'll clean off the back of the plate. One of the things that I always tell people, like if you're at the thrift store or you're at Michael's or you're at your, in your home and you're looking, look for plates. Candle plates work good too. So if you're looking in the candle section, a lot of times you might find a glass plate there, but look for something that doesn't have a logo stamped into it. Unless, you know, if you are doing a candle plate and it has a little something there, once you turn it over, you might have the candle in the center, so it wouldn't show. But if you're doing plates to eat off of, you want to find something that's plain. And they're out there, so you just, you just got to be mindful of that. Most of them come plain, but every now and then I'll see one that has a brand stamped into it, and I really do avoid those. Yes, Michael's doing curbside. Someone's, um, who is that? That is Dorothea is doing Michael's curbside for Mod Podge today. Oh, yeah. We're do, we just did a curbside order here. Yes. <laughs> and we did delivery. We've done three. We did delivery, curbside, and mail. Yeah, Michael's <laughs> over curbside. And check their website, michaels.com. Um, you can see all the uh, 
different videos, the, the, all the different Zoom videos that Michael has been doing for the last couple of weeks. There's so many good ones. A lot of good ones. Okay, now same thing. We're gonna separate our napkin. We've already got it started. We just want that one top ply. Okay, let me see. Would you be working? Um, glass jars too, yes. Kathy, while you're doing that really quickly. Oh yeah. Because we saw that ply. Let me let's bring the camera back to me and I want to show you guys these jars here. These were done, these mason jars. So you can um, do dishwasher safe. Um, you know, on top of any type of glass and ceramic that you want to do. So these were two that we did. Again, these are fun for, you know, gift making, whatever you want. You can load them up with anything. Bath salts were in one of them next to the bathtubs. Um, so even if it got wet, it didn't matter. Um, so yes, jars, glasses, plates, metal, um, ceramic, uh, the dishwasher safe is good for indoor and outdoor. Um, it dries completely hard, uh, no tack, and yeah, check it out. Kathy's gonna go back to the, to the plate. I just wanted to show you guys this. I love them on the jars, it's so yeah, cute. very nice. So before we get started with the plate, we're gonna um, use a spray bottle with just some water in it. And I have the one ply of napkin. You're gonna be working on the back side of the napkin. So you wanna flip it over so that the printed side is down. Okay, and that's because we're gonna be putting it onto the plate this direction, down, so that our print pops through on the top of the plate like that. So you'll start with your napkin down, and we're gonna add our, let's see if I'll scoot this over a little bit, and we'll add our Mod Podge. This is the dishwasher safe. And one thing about the plates is you really wanna make sure you're getting your edges. So I like to sort of feather that down because that's the most important part really is those edges. If those edges pop up, then that's where you're gonna get moisture under there. So you really wanna just go around and make sure you get all of those edges, just like so. Uh, someone's asking, can you put it on the stove top like a kettle? Uh, that would be no, no heat. Um, you know, again, you can wash these, but these will not, with any type of uh, over-the-top heat, with like a flame, yeah. I would say stay no. away from that. No, they are, but you did talk about the bath salts, and that's something that a lot yeah. of people do um, decoupage for their bathroom, mm -hmm. and I always am recommending this if you're, you know, doing makeup brush holders or things like that. I even use this formula, um, I've made some like DIY uh, organizers for my kids things. Yeah. And I like it because I can just spray clean them and you know, I don't worry about it getting wet. So yeah, while you're brushing, Kath, let me show these off really quickly. And these are some brushes that Michaels carries. These are the Mod Pod brushes that we use. You can see they're super soft. Uh, it's kind of what you want for, um, you want soft bristle when you're doing these projects and they're flat across. This is the best results you're gonna get is you might have some at home and a, a different kind of brushes, but you want them flat and you want the soft bristle. Nothing hard because you don't want to be tearing onto that one ply napkin. So these are some of the brushes that Michaels carries and these are really good brushes for um, the decoupaging with the dishwasher safe. Okay. Now that I have the plate completely covered in the dishwasher safe Mod Podge, I'm going to spray my napkin just with a very fine mist of just plain old tap water. Now remember, that was the backside. It doesn't look like the backside anymore because once you get it wet, that color really comes through. Then you just gently lift it up. Let's see if I can move this so you can see it. I got one shot, guys. Wish me luck. I'm working with the camera. <laughs> okay, and we just place it right on top of your plate. Beautiful. Got some time, but you're just sort of lightly draping it. I'm not applying any pressure. And you can see I'm picking it up. You can still move it around and it's not ripping. Um, but you just want to be very, very careful. There you go. And I had a question earlier today. I had posted in Facebook that we were going to do this class. 
And somebody said, can I use fabric for this? And the answer is yes. And then I said, oh, maybe we should do a fabric video because <laughs> it's a little bit of a different technique, but it's very yeah. simple. It's pretty simple. Uh, can you put on the plate and then spray? The best result is to spray the napkin first like Kathy showed you and then put it on the plate. If you do it opposite, it reacts differently with the dry napkin going on top of the dishwasher safe. It does work, but we have found the best results, of course, is putting the mod, the dishwasher safe on top of your surface first, then spraying your napkin, your one ply napkin, and then applying it to your surface is what we found for the less, you know, um, not as many wrinkles, um, and it just turns out better. Okay, so I've gone ahead, what I want to show you next, so I've gone ahead and sealed all my edges down, and I'm just barely applying any pressure, and you just want that napkin, you're going to pick it up, no, I would never do this in real life, but I'm going to do it for this. You just want that to hang over that edge like that, okay? And the napkin part that's here, you don't need to throw that away, you can use that on another project, a little candle holder, it's still good. Even though you got it wet, it will dry and you can still use those little bits and bobbles on something else. Okay, and now all my edges are good there. I go into the center and just work that out. And we've got the most minimal amount of wrinkles possible. It looks wet, so it's kind of hard to tell. And then you wanna set this aside and let it dry for two hours. It Normally, if you did this without wetting the napkin, it would be dry in about 20 minutes. But because you have the wet napkin, it's going to take a tiny bit longer. So yeah. we'll set that aside. And then I want to show you what it's like when it's dried. I, I brought this over a couple times. But for anyone who might be joining us a little bit late, this is the plate when it's dry. And if you can see there, we really have, that's just the actual glue part and the pulp from the napkin. So the only place that we have wrinkles is where you can't avoid them. That's where you have to gather the fabric to go over that curved edge there. So it's a really, get, by getting that wet, you really eliminate a lot of those wrinkles. Oh, is there a cheat time? You can't cheat the time, I'm sorry. So everybody no. asks, can we put it in the oven? Can we hair dry it? It's just not a good idea because you really need that cure time in order for this to be dishwasher safe. Uh, someone's asking, how do we find the brushes in Michael's? I typed in Mod Podge brushes and nothing came up. There, if you just type in Mod Podge, I think it comes up um, yeah. under there. I saw them like a couple of days ago, but they're in the Mod Podge yeah. section at the store when you're they're right the above the Mod Podge bottles. But I, I'm sure someone can find a link. Um, but if you just type in Mod Podge and then the products, because they may be called something else. I mean, I don't know why they would be called something other than a paintbrush, but you never know. Sometimes they're called spouncers or things like that. So then I have some sharp scissors. You don't need them to be too sharp, but dull, you don't really want dull. And you're just gonna go around and cut away that excess. And I just line it right up with the edge of that plate. And I don't recommend using your good sewing scissors for this. <laughs> Definitely not your sewing scissors because you're cutting through a little bit of glue there, you're cutting through paper and you're putting them right along the edge of glass. So I have, these are sort of my dedicated scissors for doing these types of projects. So you just trim away that excess. Go one time around. And then I like to flip it and go one more time around. How many types of Mod Podge are there? Well, that is a loaded question. A lot. <laughs> yes, there is a lot. Behind me, last week we did, um, the gloss formula very quickly. And we also did the matte formula. So these are the two original formulas, but there is so many glitter formulas, extreme glitter, sparkle, matte, um, gloss. So you can kind of, you can go online and punch in the Mod Podge or go to michaels.com and they can show you all the formulas they have. I'm not sure the exact number, but um, I know there's more than 20 cat. Yeah, if you think about all the different, you know, variations and sizes. I think more than 20, yeah. So there we go. That is our plate ready for the next step. And the next step is super easy. You're just going to go in 
and seal this down. This one was drying. So this one actually has been drying more than two hours. I prepped this yesterday. So you're gonna seal that with the dishwasher safe. And again, same thing. I like to work down and make sure I'm grabbing those edges because that's really the most, you know, you don't want any water to get up on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, another thing I wanna tell you about is a lot of people do these as heirlooms. So if you wanted to, some people will shrink down like a wedding invitation or a birth announcement or something like that and put that picture in the center. And then you could do a napkin even over that. So there's lots of ways that you can customize these. If it's a 50th anniversary or somebody's 21st birthday, you can really think about how can I do something, you know, to make that extra special. And this is so fast. Yeah, and you can make a whole set of these. So that's <laughs> another thing. I mean, you can really do, um, you know, the glass plates are pretty inexpensive and you can customize them however you want and do a 12 piece setting if you'd like. Really pretty. There we go. I did some uh, birthday ones for my kids and we use them every year. We pull them out and that's what they have their cake on. There we go. So that's the first coat down and that's the back side. I'm going to flip it. I shouldn't do that because normally you wouldn't do that. <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and put a little bit more where my finger went. So now you're going to let this dry. Again, you want that to dry for um, a good couple of hours. You want two hours in between. And once it's dry, you're ready to do the painting. And I've gone ahead and painted one coat on the back side. And I'm gonna show you how simple that is. I'm using the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. And I'm using it in a light, um, it's called, I think it's called Vintage White. You can use bright white, vintage white. You can use any, you know, real color that you want. If you wanted to experiment with using a light pink or matching the napkin color, you could do that too. Yeah, and the paint is really, if you, you know, you saw what Kathy did before, you can see it's kind of almost see-through a little bit, foggy see-through, and the paint is what really makes the napkin stand out. Yeah. So you can see between the two of them, you know, a little bit clear, and then the paint, once you apply the paint, um, it really pops that napkin image out. So this is one coat of paint down. Um, you can do one coat or two coats. For myself personally, I usually do one coat. If I'm giving it as a gift, I do two coats. <laughs> hmm. It's that saying, like the shoemaker's kid doesn't have shoes or something. So one coat for me, two coats as a gift. So you go around those edges. The multi-surface paint uh, works on, you can do Craft Smart, you can do um, Folk Art. It works on glass, metal, so this is a really good paint just for working on glass anyways. Can you use acrylic paint? This is acrylic. It's yes, just a, you can. Yeah, this is acrylic. The multi-surface though is really nice because it's formulated for glass. So even though it's not touching the glass right now, it does, um, it works on so many surfaces, but it, it dries and cures very solid. Yeah, because you're gonna be putting another coat on top to, um, to seal it. So I think that's what people are confused by. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll move on to that. So there you go. So that's just painting the back of it. And that's what allows your napkin to really pop through. So now I'll set this one aside. Sorry, guys, I have a whole bunch of step outs. I hope that's not too confusing. So then this one is my finished one. And what you will do is paint my, you don't have, nope. Someone's asking if you can paint it you do not have to paint it. Like these ones I paint, I put the napkin down, um, I don't like at least 24 hours ago. So no, you could do all of them, let them dry overnight. You could come back a week later and do the next step. It wouldn't matter. You just wanna make sure you do a nice uh, dry time. So again, I'm gonna- Mod Podge you can use on wood. Yes, you can use all the formulas basically on wood, uh, but obviously the dishwasher safe, you're not gonna use and put in the dishwasher or get it wet because it's wood. You have to use a glass, a ceramic, a metal for that to work. But um, everything from the gloss to the matte formula to outdoors, um, Mod Podge, yes, you can use on wood. So now I'm just adding a top coat here. 
that's the top coat on the bottom. That sounds kind of funny. But so you're just going to add a top coat over the painted surface. This is still the dishwasher formula. And then I would let this dry for two hours. And then I would add one more top coat of the dishwasher safe just to make sure that it is solid and ready to be either hand washed or top rack safe. So the plates don't really fit in the top rack unless you have one of those European style dishwashers, which I don't really, I don't know anybody who has one. But if you're thinking about like the mug, you know, this is top rack, I wanna show you um, this too. So you can do this same technique on stemware. So this is that same napkin. Can you see that bottom there, that napkin there on the bottom? And we painted the bottom and did all of the dishwasher safe there. And that's why you can really see that napkin popping through. On the top here, we did not do any painting behind it. Those are just the pieces of flowers cut out and then randomly layered up to create this sort of ombre look. So yeah. again, if you're wanting to create like a whole tablescape or something, you could create anything from stemwares to wines or anything like that. Yes, you can do cutouts, guys. Uh, like on the plate, if you just wanted to do uh, a heart right in the middle with the napkin, you can put that on and then have the rest of the plate clear. That works. Um, like on the mug that Kathy's showing you, she didn't do the whole mug. She just did a small section. So this could just be done in, in sections of where you want uh, the napkin to go down. You do not have to do the entire uh, surface. And um, if you wanted to do a plate, like I'm gonna pull this one over, it's still kind of wet, but let's say um, you wanted to do like a photograph or something in the center, you would work on the back side still. So first you would Mod Podge down a photograph. It could be a graphic from a card, a piece of scrapbook paper, whatever. Then you could layer the napkin around it and you just keep building up. So then when you have your plate this way, you would see the picture and then you would see the napkin all around it. It's really fun, like if you've got, you know, family photos and stuff like that, because you're thinking about eating off of these, but these are also really fun projects that you can hang these plates on the wall with a wall hanger or use a decorative plate stand to display them. You know, it's a very simple technique to just- yes. You do have to wait 28 days, guys. Um, <laughs> it's, so it's not 10 days, it's not 15. Really wait the 28 days. Uh, if you try to put it in the dishwasher, wash it by hand before that, you might run into some trouble, so. Yeah, I mean, if you were just gonna hang it on the wall, uh-oh, sorry guys. Your cell phone, that oh. went out. Anyways, well, oh, there you go, Kath, okay. That was my sister trying to call me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have my phone on, do not disturb, but no, I, you know, me, uh, you would think I know all this about technology, but I don't. <laughs> So, um, and then I wanted to show you quickly um, this wine glass too, because this is a different napkin, but you can see on the bottom there. That's uh, a good example for the half that people have been talking about, Kath. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, I didn't see that. Oh, and somebody asked me if the last layer on the plate is the dishwasher safe Mod Podge, and it is. It's the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I like to do three layers of it, okay? Three different, uh, sorry, this is a little, Wiggly, so two hours waiting time in between. Two hours in between. So this is um, what a wine glass would look like. Again, this is just the napkin here. There's no painting behind it. You could use the folk art um, multi-surface paint and paint your wine glass first and then put the napkin on it. And if you did that, you would get this solid look like that's down here. So I specifically made this one so you could see the difference. So this is the solid look with the paint like that. If you wanted to do something like this, you could put um, painter's tape here and paint this with the folk art multi-surface paint or any enamel paint, any kind of um, glass type paint. But honestly, this multi-surface is just so easy because it will work on wood also, whatever. You don't yeah. need to buy two different ones. And then you would just Mod Podge your napkin on it. This is the napkin without the paint below it. And this is the napkin with the paint below it. So Somebody is asking it, glitter. Yes, you guys can do glitter. Yeah. You can actually Mod Podge with the dishwasher safe on top of the glass or ceramic, whatever you're going to be using for your surface. You can add glitter to that area and then 
you would want to wait a couple hours and then put the dishwasher safe on top of the glitter. Now we did some, what was it? Champagne flutes cap mm -hmm. for New Year's, remember? Yep. And we completely covered the whole entire flutes with gold glitter and then did the dishwasher, did a couple coats on the outside of the flutes and it, God, I wish we had, I wish we had them or had a picture of oh, them. Yeah. They looked really, really great. So yes, you can do that again. Just double coat them on the outside and, and the glitter looks beautiful. Yeah, and if you're doing the glitter too, um, ultra fine glitter works the best. We have so, a video on that. We should. Um, yeah, we do. We have. Yeah. Um, we do have a video. We have. I think we have several videos. <laughs> but I think if you look at dishwasher safe glitter, Kathy and Steve, I think you can find that video because that'd be a really cool thing for you guys to see the glitter on top. We're using napkins today, but you can totally glitter on top of these glasses, and they look spectacular. I think it might be under um, New Year's glitter, Kathy and Steve. Um, yeah, it's just glitter. Safe. You'll find them. And so we were talking about if you wanted to do a picture or a graphic or something like that, um, if you put your picture face down, right, then you could also, or you put a bit of the napkin, like how we have the little heart motif here, you can put that down. Then you can add the dishwasher Mod Podge all over that and sprinkle the glitter on that and then seal it again. So you can create a layered up look like that as well. Um, so there's just a lot of different ways that you can do it if you're working yes. with glitter. I mean, today's was all about transforming these napkins and these um, just different types of dishware to create your own type. Let's see, let what me, kind of paper? Let me show this one really quickly. This was on plastic, guys. And this, again, was a one-ply napkin also. This is a, um, you know, we just did it on top of, um, what Apple was sauce. This? What was this? Kids applesauce. Applesauce, that's what it was, on top of applesauce. It's got a nice handle on it. So again, you can uh, do it on top of the plastic. This was, uh, I, I say bath salts because it's next to a tub and it's plastic and water. So you can, uh, this is fun for the kids too. So yes, uh, here's another one just to give you guys another idea, not just a mug and, and a, um, a plate, but you can really kind of think outside of the box and use the dishwasher safe on a lot of different things. Mason jars, of course, <laughs> popular and between the mason jars and the napkins the design of the napkins that are out there they're beautiful so um here's two other examples of how to use the dishwasher safe uh let's see did the applesauce use one sheet of so the applesauce used one napkin and we can yes. talk about that really quickly also um so there's a couple of different napkin sizes this is like what you consider a fingertip napkin um, and these are really nice for plate sizes because they open up quite large, you know, large enough to have overhang on our plate. Um, and then there's what's more like a cocktail napkin, which is the little square style. And then um, there's also a dinner style. I don't have that size here, but it's more like, oh gosh, let's see, about like that size and that was one of these for the applesauce jar so you know the recycling stuff is really fun steve can you hold up the um applesauce jar again sure so and what people are qu very quickly guys people are just asking uh, if you guys have come in late you can go to michaels.com and see this from the beginning so uh our video is here um, cause some people are asking some stuff that they might've missed. So if you go to michaels.com, you can watch the video. So here's the applesauce. Um, Steve, okay. I think it takes a little time for the video to process. So okay. it may not be available until tomorrow. Okay, great. Yeah. So what did so you want to see? With the applesauce jar though, we did paint it. So we painted it with some of the multi-surface paint first. Yes. So you can paint it with chalk paint or you can paint it with the multi-surface paint. Um, and that will just make it again so that the image in the napkin really pops through. That's a spaghetti jar. Yep. So and really you know, it's endless. Yeah, so this is one ply. I mean, it's they're super pretty. So there you go. And do you have the blue one? Is the blue one still there? Yep. I love this one. So again, you guys can do this on glass and ceramic and metal it works amazing on metal and plastic 
And then you can finish off, like if you're doing jars like this, you know, with any little scrap ribbons or baubles that you have. Um, no, the applesauce jar is actually really easy to do. Um, I would do it more with an all over print as opposed to something that has straight lines, like napkins with straight lines can be difficult to do, but napkins with all over prints are quite easy to do. Um, the jar was very simple. I would just use um, a very soft kind of, for applying it, I like to use a flat brush like this. Um, sometimes if you're getting in grooves, I like a soft round brush like this. So for the applesauce, it's got a lot of ridges on it, but that's why I really wanted Steve to show you that applesauce one because these napkins, they go over so many different shapes. And yes. you know, if, I, for me, I've got two little ones. So we go through applesauce a lot and I was just hating throwing away those jars. <laughs> like, what do we do with them? So and we I think it's going to apply applesauce. easier than you guys think using that brush and using you know, when you, if you wet, make sure you wet the napkin and once you lay it over on top of your image, you're going to see with your brush moving in, in, in certain areas. Where is it again? Like this applesauce, it really does take into the grooves very easily. You can see, so this was very lightly pushed in. Um, it's not, you know, and of course, you got to be a little bit careful that you don't rip it, but you'll, you'll see once you drape it over and push it, it just sticks right into these grooves. And it's much easier, um, I think, than, than, than maybe what you think. It's not uh, a difficult project. It really, it really does kind of work on, its, work on its own with a little bit of help from, from you. But yeah, so there's that. Let me show these other plates really quick, Kathy, that we did. Just yeah, so yeah. they can see a variety for the people that are just tuning in or came in a little bit late. So this is uh, another plate that we did with um, the dishwasher safe. You can see that. And this is a good example of how the color might change a little bit. So this is a little bit of a darker raspberry and you can see it's much lighter. And here's the back of it. Yeah, all the napkins, you have to do a test because yeah. that's a good example. They all, depending upon how, what ink was used when they were manufactured, they yeah. do kind of take on a life of their own, but it's what's fun about it too. And I'll show you, you see these little like layers, these wrinkles that, you know, are, are on this. You don't see them at all on the plate. So um, look at this one. This one has, which are, are unavoidable because it's paper thin napkin, but you can see a little bit of the wrinkles on that. But when you turn it over and look at the plate, you don't see any wrinkles whatsoever. So just keep that in mind that um, it's, you know, when we say wrinkles, it really kind of, they get completely disguised. I can't even see them with my naked eye here, so. Well, and like, if you look on the mug here, this is a flat surface, so we don't really have any wrinkles on the mug. So if you're working on a plate or something where you have a curved edge, you're never going to be able to not have that because it's just like kind of like sewing. You're gonna have to, at some point, make a little gather. Yeah. But if you it's wet so that good. napkin, it really disappears a lot more. And they're a little bit more pronounced right now because they're still wet. That's wet Mod Podge in there. Yeah. But once it's dry, you know, it really just disappears. So I wanna show you quickly a couple of other things. Before I do that, remember we are having a giveaway. So we're gonna, um, Yes, you can use colored um, paint on the back. Uh, you can either match your napkin color. So go with like sort of a minty green here, or if you had a pink napkin, pink. You can experiment. Um, I've done it with black. I've done it with metallics. It really just depends on the look that you're going for. But, you know, you can, um, if you have some recycled materials, like a clear sleeve that came with something that's a really easy thing to just practice on and see the colors and see how it turns out without actually working on your real piece now if you work on your real piece like we said earlier and you hate it get it in the wash within the first like 20 minutes 30 minutes and you'll be fine if you wait like an hour uh soak it overnight and then give it a scrub and it will come off but it, it's it's a hard formula it sticks pretty quick so Another thing that's fun about napkins, which is what we did on the wine glass, okay, is just cutting out the motifs. And I'm gonna show you two quick tips before we wrap it up. You can, these are the same scissors. I love these because they have a nice sharp point so they can get into different areas. You can just sort of, I'm, 
I'm only using the one ply, I already separated it. Just move that napkin through the scissor. And you know, you don't need to worry if you're cutting it exactly. And it's really easy, but that's the simplest way just to cut out little motifs. Just sort of let it guide through the scissors. And that will give you a sharp edge. Some people might want to have more of a feathered edge. Oh, and Steve, you mentioned if like on the applesauce jar, yes. if the napkin tears a little bit or you have like kind of a uh, spot, you know what you do? You just cut out another leaf or flower and you mod podge it over your bad spot. And That's nobody right. Knows. <laughs> you, can kind of, you guys can do a collage with these things. You can layer on top of layers with the napkins. So don't think it's just, you know, one, you know, you can do a complete um, collage on top of, on top of this and you can mix the, the napkins with the paints. So there's all sorts of ways to do it. Um, you just have to make sure that you are protecting it for it to work with the dishwasher safe on top of it to make sure it's sealed properly. So um, if you wanted to create a feathered edge um, on your napkin, you can just um, dip just some tap water. You can use a thick brush, little brush, it doesn't really matter. You just want a little water on a brush. You can, whoop, let's see, let's start at a new spot. Can you guys see that? Just work around your napkin, just like so. Now this is when you're getting more collage-y. So some people really like to collage these and create more vintage looks. You can kind of, oops, I didn't get enough water right there. Go ahead and tear that out. So you can cut your image if you're trying to isolate a design from a napkin or you can tear it like this. And that creates more of a feathered edge around your design. So if people are doing collages or layering all these up, that's a fun way to just sort of keep that overlap. It's a different look. It's a little bit more shabby chicy looking. Um, so you can do a hard cut edge like that with scissors. Or if you want a feathered edge, you can do it with the um, water technique. And again, that's just going around your design like that, singling it out. And you may even want to do a combo of these. You might want to do some of these feathered edge flowers with, you know, there's napkins with fairies on them. I mean, and seasonal napkins. Wow, there's always so many seasonal napkins. Just pull, you just tear that out, just like so. It's very simple to do, or you can have your hard edge motif like that. But you know, you can layer them up. It's all about getting creative. It's really all about finding your favorite napkin, right? <laughs> just looking for a napkin you love and then what can I put it on? <laughs> so here's the eight ounce bottle guys, just quickly to show you guys, because I also want to show you really quickly. It's the eight ounce bottle it comes in, but it also comes in a 16 ounce bottle. So if you guys are um, doing a big, huge project or you're getting together with a club, or whatever you have, there's also a 16 ounce bottle, but this is the eight ounce bottle. This is one you might want to start off with to try these projects, but the 16 ounce bottle uh, is also. So Kath, should we talk really quickly about next week? Yeah, I do want to say one thing too about the, the napkins and the mugs and these types of things um, that I don't think we touched on, but a lot of people um, have you know, home businesses where they're creating things. These are all great um, sellers as far as like, if you're making something, they're um, very inexpensive to do like trash to treasure, especially if you're doing mason jars or things like that. So these are all really great fundraising items or church bazaar or things like that. Like, so think about these napkins and how you can use them in these different projects. So a lot of people do the bath salts or the hot cocoa mixes or that kind of thing. So, and again, if you miss the earlier one, we cut the heart out, but you can easily cut out, you know, a letter and create a monogram one. There's many, many different ideas that you can do. Yes, next week. We have a really Here fun for you guys next week. Let's show this. I don't know if you guys know about Dimensional Magic, if you've seen it before, but um, this, there's a reason why it's called Magic a little bit. This <laughs> stuff is really, really cool. This is, we're going to be doing this next Friday. 
And Dimensional Magic is basically, it gives a hard, glassy finish. We like to say it's like a faux resin. Kathy has a couple more projects over there to show you, but I'm, let me show you this. This is a piece of scrapbook paper, just on a, uh, a metal um, circle there. And it is like a faux resin, it's hard. It's still a water-based item, so this is not a resin itself, it's a faux resin, but it gives this three-dimensional bubble completely clear. And there are so many different things that you can do with Dimensional Magic. And we wanna show you guys this next Friday. Now, Kath, I know you have a couple more projects over there yeah. that you can show them. I'll show you, yeah. So next Friday, we're gonna have another video um, or class, I guess we should say Zoom class. This is also new technology, right? It's, it's a Zoom, it's a Zoom. So this is the Dimensional Magic, and these are, um, Steve, you said metal, but these are on wood chips, just wood circles. Oh, so, I, I thought I said wood circles, sorry. That's all right. So I don't know if you can see, it's kind of catching the light there. That creates that domey glass-like finish. So we're gonna show you this in next week's class. So be sure to check for the roster for that, for that sign up. And we're also gonna be working with these bead landing um, pieces. So these are pendants like this. And we're gonna show you how you can create um, family photo pendants with these. And then also using scrapbook paper to create some modern designs. So we'll have some family photo um, pendants going on, which is fun to create some heirloom stuff. And then we're gonna have some fun other pendants. These make great necklaces. They also make great fun ornaments. And we'll top them off. We'll be using the Gloss Mod Podge and the Dimensional Magic to seal yeah. them and create these really cool kind of domey uh, glassy finishes. I hope you guys can see that, but it's kind of hard. There we go. Little. Yeah, we can see them. It looks nice. Good. So that will be next Friday. And like we said earlier, in case you missed it, you can go to michaels.com classes and all of the different classes. They've got classes on crochet, cake making. I mean, there's so many different classes at this Zoom time. So you should really take advantage of them, sign up for the ones you want, and then just tune in and have fun with everybody because everybody's got some fun stuff to show. Last week we did a collage using, sorry guys, I'm just reaching over here, using a matte and gloss Mod Podge. So we, this is just a few sheets of scrapbook paper and one of the uh, canvases, just some artwork. So we've got all sorts of fun ideas coming up and there's so many different fun classes. So I hope you go to michaels.com, the classes section and check it out. See the old videos, sign up for the new videos. <laughs> How do we pick the winner, Steve? Oh my God, it's gonna be hard, right? But we're gonna pick the winner. When are we going to reveal who the winner is, is the question. Well, okay, so before we pick a winner, yes, I don't even know, I can't see everybody's names, so we may need somebody from Michaels to help us pull yeah. a number or name. But I just want you to know, if you get chosen, you will need to email Plaid, not Michaels, Plaid, and uh, Plaid is the manufacturer of Mod Podge and Folk Art and lots of your favorite stencils and Boosilla, all sorts of fun stuff. So you're gonna wanna email the communications at platonline.com. So if your name is chosen, that's where you're going to email. Does that look? Yeah, cool? Hulk, yeah, just stay right there. Let the people are writing it down, so. Does it look backwards or does it look? No, 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 you're perfect. Okay. Communications at platonline.com. Yep. Yes. So email there and two people are going to win some um, Mod Podge products. And like I said, Plaid does some pretty good giveaways. So uh, Dishwasher Safe, of course, will be in there. Um, and I'm sure you're going to be getting a bunch of different Mod Podge formulas and some brushes. And we don't even know, but I've seen them. I've seen their, their giveaways and they're, they're pretty good. I was just going to say, Plaid does not skimp on their giveaway. No, they don't. Yeah. Um, okay, so how do we pick? Who picks? Are you picking, Steve? I see some names here. Should I just scroll and randomly stop on somebody? Oh, we're, we're going to do it right now? Yes, let's do it right now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You okay. do one and I'll do one, Kat. Go. You oh, go. look at it. That's beautiful. Someone's holding a project up. That's so pretty. Linda. Okay, ready? And it stopped on Gwendolyn's Fire. Is Gwendolyn's Fire still here? The Mod Podge, no, the Mod Podge isn't causing me to cough. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, should I choose a different one? I'm, oh, is she not on? I don't know. 
I don't know how I can tell. Mm, how can we uh, tell? I don't know. I'd be careful though. Because can you give me the name one more time? Uh, Gwendolyn's Fire. She is still on. Okay. Gwendolyn's Fire, can you hear us? Make sure you are emailing plaid at communications at plaidonline.com. Email them so we can get your address. And, and she just responded that she's oh. here. She hears okay. us. Awesome. Let me, pick, not, let me pick number two. Okay. Here we go. And I'm scrolling, scrolling, and I'm stopping on Cindy. Oh, God. I'm such a terrible. I can't even pronounce that. You need your know. A U dash Y E U N D Cindy Young I Young. I'm sorry if I'm messing up this name. Is Cindy here? Yes, I just saw her respond. She's so excited. Okay, there we go. Cindy. So those are the I two random picks. I see a, a young man holding up a plate. I think. Where? Let me see. Let's see, did somebody create a plate along with us? I don't yep. know. Someone was, oh, and a mug! Ah, oh, you look oh, right on. Gorgeous. Look at that. That looks great. Wow. That's fantastic. Did you use tissue paper or napkins? What did you use? Can't tell, huh? So cute. I love the mug, too. That's awesome. That looks amazing. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Make sure you sign up for the next class. We're going to do the dimensional magic pendants. So um, some family photos uh, and some scrapbook paper, literally scrapbook paper. Like it's going to be scraps of scrapbook paper because you only need like this much. So again, just like the napkins, I don't throw anything away. Poor Steve. He's like, can we throw this away? I'm like, no, we got to keep it. We might need it a year from now. <laughs> and we always do use it. So yes, next Friday, guys, dimensional magic. Come back and join us. This stuff's a lot of fun. There'll be some jewelry to be made. And I think, Kath, we're going to maybe show a couple extra projects. What else you can do it aside from the jewelry? Yes, we're yes. We're going to show you how else you can use the dimensional magic. If not just jewelry, um, this is a great embellisher on top of cards and all sorts of things. So yeah. tune in next Friday for dimensional magic. And we're so happy. And thank you, guys. And thank you, Michaels. Michaels, thank you so much for being our you know, our store. Um, come join us and we'll see you guys next time, next Friday. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you.